think the first thing I thought was that it was like um, something out of a fairy tale, something like that, um, because it's very overgrown and you have these wonderful monuments with funny names like Victorian names, Ebenezer and I don't know, funny old fashioned names and then you have tree roots around them and ivy and I really, I really, I really like that. I was reading a book about uh, Rome and how uh, in about 1600 Rome was all falling to pieces so people built houses into the side of the Colosseum and they built on top of other things and it was like a, a build up of layers of time you know and the cemetery is like that because nature's taken over but you have all these old things from 100 years ago 200 years ago sticking out and i just thought it's an incredibly interesting environment several stones and monuments smashed. It's not only that, I've had, I've had my parents' monuments smashed three times. We had it repaired. Um, keeps, the, keeps the stone masons in business, but that's beside the point. And they're quite, quite genuine people anyway, they are, yeah. And uh, um, say anything to a stone mason and he turned around and said, immediately, yes, I'll come and do it. They were very, very good. I like the one, I don't know where it is, I think it's back that way of the lion. Have you seen, it's beautiful, it's a big sort of sleeping lion which is over there somewhere. I always get a bit confused where everything is, but some of them are lovely, there's some lovely angels over that way as well. I think the park is a, a type of refuge. I mean, obviously for the animals, as a sanctuary, and and something we're trying to do is um, sort of open up the monuments alongside the path, so that the heritage is visible for for visitors, but have the compartments as, as still sanctuaries for wildlife. You know, you can you can even just hear the sort of the, the cars disappear as you walk into the park, and it's just quite a barrier for noise, and obviously great for oxygen. Mm -hmm. 